come Now is the time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Come It's just as you are to worship Come just as you are before your God, oh come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. But still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before. God, oh come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you now Come, now is the time to worship Come, and now is the time to give your As you are to worship, come. Just as you are before your God, oh come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day. treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to Is the time to give your heart? Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Oh God.
morning Celebrate the light as I stumble in the darkness. But I will call your name by night. God, the wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Your majesty, you are holy, holy. We got wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Universe claims your majesty. We adore you, we 
adore you. We adore you. Oh God. We just lift up a praise God. gather tonight in your name and we come with a thankful heart we come with a heart filled with love for you and we bless you with everything within us and we give you all the honor and the praise and the glory for you are God and we thank you for this night in Jesus' name amen oh that's beautiful that's just beautiful there might just be a few of us here, but I feel him. Do you feel the very presence of God? Let's just lift our hands one more time and thank him for 
you alone are God. You alone are God, and we worship you. You are holy, Lord. You are so holy. We worship you. worship you this night. King of kings, Lord of lords, we worship you. There's nothing greater we can do in our day than worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords and give him all the praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you this night. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, I know. Thank you, Frank. Oh, my goodness. I know. Wow. There's a holy presence of the Lord in this house. Can you feel him? Yeah. He's here. He says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And you guys came out tonight. You didn't stay home and cook turkey. Wow. I, I know Melissa always says, Mom, we ought to cancel on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Nobody ever comes. <laughs> So you guys came tonight. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm still, I have to get off the glory trip a second. Oh, Father, we love you so much. We praise you. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. And we love you so much. You are great and marvelous. You are kind and just and true. Your ways are everlasting. There's no God like you. Who will not come and bow before you and give you honor and glory and praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, come magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The Bible says, I was poor and I cried unto the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me out of all my troubles. And then it goes on to say, the young lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. Is that not right? 
Amen. Psalm 34. Well, glory to the Lord. We'll just, we'll just end it tonight, and we'll just give unto the Lord at the end. I was going to be quick tonight and try to get you out by 8 o'clock so you can get home and do whatever you have to do. And uh, Lord gave me a sermon, though. I want to make sure and deliver it. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 20. If you don't have it, it's okay. I'll read the scriptures to you. Father, we thank you this night that you're such a gracious God. And Father, we thank you for Tom also, who sits right here in this sanctuary. It's been so good to see his face again, and Lydia. And Father, we just thank you for the life of God and the anointing of God that flows through them. And we just bless him, and we're going to pray for him at the end. But I just thank you, Lord, for him and Lydia. Bless them. Uh, there's a, a walk of faith that we have to walk every day. It's not just a once walk of faith. You know, it's not, oh, I've got faith, and I'll have that faith from now on. And the Bible says everybody has been given a measure of faith, and we can get that measure to grow. But our daily walk is a walk of faith. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And I lose my faith when I look at sight. When I have to look and see, that's when I lose faith. Because if we're going to look at something, we're going to lose seeing. You, you can't always see what is going to happen. So faith is, is not seeing what God's going to do, but believing it will happen. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we do have a walk, don't we? Every day we get up in the morning and it's our decision how we're going to walk out that day. We either walk out that day in faith or we walk out that day with no faith. And so it's up to you. I have found in these over 35 years of serving the Lord, plus when I was a little child, that it is a daily walk. Some days it seems so easy to get up and just have the faith of God and everything is wonderful. It's like all the flowers are blooming, the sun is shining. Everything is perfect. But then you can get a phone call or something can happen and your whole day can change in a moment of time and you've got to activate your faith. Let's uh, read Acts 20. Uh, let's start with verse 21. And this is talking about Paul, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God. This is what he was preaching, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So the main two things that Paul preached was repentance, and that is something we need to do daily. We need to repent. We need to live a repentive life. You want the anointing to come, stay humble in your own eyes, stay repentive, and the anointing will come. And also faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So that was his two main topics that he preached, repentance and faith. And we need to realize that. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. And then he says, except save that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide for me. Wow. So he's going to go on to cities, but the Holy Ghost has witnessed to him, and probably through prophetic words also, that bonds and afflictions are waiting for him in cities. Oh, would you go there? <laughs> now, talk about a walk of faith. Paul had to really walk it out, because if I knew that that I was going to have prison, I was going to go to prison, I was going to have afflictions come my way. I don't know if I would have enough faith to go there. But Paul had enough faith that he went on and did what he had to do for the Lord to preach repentance, to preach faith towards God. But then he says here in verse 24, I love this, but none of these things move me. Prison, afflictions, they're not moving him off of the faith walk. They're not moving him. Uh, we can be easily moved and go, on, go another direction, but Paul says none of these things move me. No matter what I go through upon this earth, no matter what's happening, no matter what somebody has said about me or what somebody has done to me or what lie has been told or what has not been told, I'm not going to be moved. No matter what kind of pain I've got in my body, what kind of sorrow, what kind of financial difficulties I'm going through, no matter what kind of persecution, none of these things move me. And then he goes on to say, neither count I my life dear unto myself. So he did not consider himself. He was not self-absorbed, self-seeking. He didn't count itself. So and this is why he couldn't count his own life, so that I might finish my course with joy. Now, if you're going to look at self, you're not going to have much joy. You're going to be, poor old me. Woe is me. 
Sometimes things aren't always right in your life, and you cannot finish your course with joy. I know Monday I was doing really great, and I got home from school Monday, and Gracie and everybody had had the flu, and I haven't had flu in a long time, and I started feeling really bad and uh, not too well at all. And so just felt terrible. So I was sick all night, got up the next morning and felt terrible and had to watch uh, Hope's two children plus another. And I'm trying to keep them from me as I'm practically, you know, how you're dying on the couch. I'm like, ah. Uh. And had them until 3 o'clock. And then by 7 o'clock, we were supposed to go out for Tony's birthday. And I finally had to make a phone call. I can't do it. None of these things move me. And Hap's telling me, honey, just get up and go. <laughs> yeah, you get up and go, honey. <laughs> get up and go, get up and go, get up and go. You can do that. None of these things move me. So I was moved yesterday. I was moved with affl affliction, so it was moving me. And I wasn't moving towards faith. I was moving towards, oh, woe is me. I got to watch all these children and I'm sick and I want to just lay down. <laughs> so things can come your way and they can move you off of the walk of faith instead of fighting the good fight of faith and confessing the word of God and getting yourself up and going. You, you gave in, when you give in to it, believe me, it's all over. You just can't give in to it. So he said, none of these things move me. And then he says, he had to finish with joy the ministry that was given to him by the Lord Jesus to testify of the grace of God. So he also had, not only he had to preach repentance, he had, he had to preach faith, he had to preach the grace of God. These were his topics. So we have to remember this. Now let's turn to 1 Peter 4. And number one, you must, I have found out, number one, to walk the walk of faith, you must be armed and dangerous. Yeah. Look out, devil, because <laughs> you're getting a hold of the wrong person. So you have to be armed and dangerous, number one, to walk the walk of faith. Armed for spiritual combat. The walk of faith. First uh, Peter 4, 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh... Arm yourselves. Get ready. Ephesians 6. Arm yourselves. Likewise, with the same mind, have the mind of Christ that he has suffered in the flesh, has ceased from sin. He that has suffered in the flesh. And he's saying here, stop depending on the arm of the flesh, self-sufficiency. Depend only on the finished work of Christ. That's what you have. Christ suffered in the flesh that I might be free from that flesh holding me in bondage. So I have to arm myself. I have to be free from the bondages of this world. That we no longer should live the rest of this time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. So we cannot live to the lust of our flesh. Whatever our flesh might be doing, whatever our flesh might want, we cannot live to that. We have to live to what the will of God is. And what is the will of God? That his kingdom come upon this earth as it is in heaven. That's the will of God. The will of God is that we finish our course with joy, that we walk out this life in total victory every day, even in the midst of trials and tribulations and afflictions. So he wants us to live in victory every day. Let's turn to Mark 4. And if you, I'm sure you know this. Number two, the walk of faith. We have to know this. Tribulation is inevitable. You are going to tribulate. When we first got born again and we got a hold of the faith message and uh, we had this assumption that we would never have a sick day again. We would never have a worrisome day. We would never have one trial, one, one anything. We would just walk it out in total victory. And we did that for about 10 years. And then the enemy came. Wham. So we, we thought we would just totally be free. But it tells us here in verse, in Mark 4, 14, the sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. So if we don't have a good uh, root system, Satan's going to come immediately and steal that word from us and take away the word that was sown in our heart. And these are they likewise that are sown on stony ground. So the ground is a little bit better here. It's not, it's not like the wayside. And it says, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. 
You've had people come in and they've gotten all excited about the Word of God and they've received it with gladness. Or you've heard something in the Word and you receive it with gladness. Wow, that's true. I got that. I'm going to walk that out. I'm going to live in victory. I'm going to let the anointing and the power of God, I'm going to live in that. I'm going to live in the faith walk. And you receive it with gladness and you're all excited. Wow, this is it. This is what I'm doing. But have no root in themselves. But endure for just a time. And when affliction and persecution comes for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Have you ever been offended? I believe that is one of the greatest tactics of the enemy that he can do to us is offense. Remember Naaman when he was going to dip in the, in the river? He didn't want to dip in, that, in the Jordan. He'd rather dip in the Damascus. And what was he? He was offended. And he almost didn't get his healing because of offense. So we can't allow that spirit of offense to come. So they're offended. So the word didn't prosper them. So if we have any offense in our life, the word isn't going to prosper us. We got to keep offense from us. We got to keep away from it. I know I have been offended before. You've never been offended until you tried to start a church, you know. And then it's like unbelievable. Donna knows what we went through in the beginning, the offenses and all the horrors that the enemy tried to stop this church here. But I endured. I kept enduring and enduring and enduring and fought the good fight of faith and walked it out every day. So if the enemy can get you, he will. So you have to fight with everything within you because affliction is going to come. Persecution is going to come. Tribulation is going to come your way. You might be going through a wonderful time right now, which we do do that. Some of us, we have such a, a, a wonderful, easy walk, and then all of a sudden, bam, it comes. And then you got to walk it out again. That's why when you're going through the, the wonderful times, you got to keep your faith level high because there will be times where things come your way, and we have to know how to live. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. But then what happens? This is horrible, the cares of this world. And there's a lot of cares of this world, isn't there? The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other, other things. How, how many of you have, have lust of other things? Have you ever just, now I don't know if you're like me, but I can lust for things, can't you? Can't you just, have you ever seen anything that you want so bad? And you just lust for it, and you try not to? You know, you just, it's like, we were, we were at this new outlet mall and I don't know, in St. Louis, by the, uh, by the Spirit of St. Louis Airport. And we were going through this, this uh, store where I get some clothes and they had this cutest top. I want it so bad. And it was just a mere $1,000. And I thought, that's a lustful thing. <laughs> that is lustful. <laughs> and then my dear husband says, if you want it, I'll buy it for you. I said, no, honey, I, no, that's sin. <laughs> That's sin. I can't do that. And, and, but you, and then I thought about it for a few days, and I thought, I could have had that. And then I thought, do I need that? No. Will it profit me any? No. Will it profit the gospel? No. So do I really need that? I want it. <laughs> but when the lust of other things, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches come in, it chokes the word, and it does not profit us. It's not profitable. It becomes unfruitful. So if the enemy can come with tribulation, whatever he can do to stop the word from prospering, he'll do it. But we have to be smarter than him, and we have to know his tactics. So we fight the good fight of faith. We walk it out daily. And then these are they which are sown on good ground. Now, say it with me. I'm good ground. I'm good ground. I'm really good ground. I hear the word, and it produces fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. I'm just 100 fold. I'm, I'm going after that fruit. I want it in my life. I not only want fruit of financial riches, I want fruit of joy and peace and love, mercy, goodness. I want to walk out the fruit of the Spirit. I want that in my life. John 16, 33 says, in me you might have peace. Now that's might. In him. That sounds to me like it's our decision. In me, you might have peace. But it says, but in the world, you will have tribulation. So he's saying, in me, I can have peace in him if I choose that peace. But in the world, without a doubt, I will have tribulation in the world. 
Because the world system is totally opposite from God's system. Anything in the world is an opposite from what God tells us. And he says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So if he's overcome, we've overcome. We are overcomers because he overcame. What he did, we did because we do it through him, and he did it for us. So we're victorious. Let's turn to Acts chapter 14, verse 19. Here we see Paul, you know, here, here they are. They're, um, they just had a wonderful thing happen. A, he, a cripple was healed, and all the people there wanted to worship him as gods, and they cried, no, you can't do that. And then you turn around, and they were going to worship him. Now they're going to kill him. So it says here in verse 19, and there came thither uh, certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people, having stoned Paul, they stoned him here, drew him out of the city. So they had to drag him out of the city. They stoned him. Now, I'd say that's some tribulation. Huh? You might feel like you've been stoned. Have you ever felt that way? You might feel like you've been beat up and left for dead, and you just like to stay there. Supposing he had been dead, howbeit as disciples stood round about him, he rose up. Now, I don't know this for sure, but I just like to believe he died. And he was raised from the dead. I don't know. He came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas. He, he, he was stoned. He was, I mean, even if he wasn't dead, he was pretty badly hurt. But the next day he gets up and he goes on. Wow, that's some tribulation. That's some distress. And when they had preached the gospel, he not only got up, he preached the gospel in that city and had, had taught many. They returned again to Lystra and to Arconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And here Paul's been stoned. He's been beat up. And he has the audacity to say, continue in the faith. Paul, why were you stoned? Why were you beat up, Paul, if you're a faith man? What's the matter with you, boy? You're supposed to be a man of faith, and you're going to prison, and you're being stoned. I don't know about this. And he's telling him to walk in faith. And then listen, what else, what else he says? And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So, number two, tribulation is inevitable. Paul tribulated all the time. Not sometime. All the time, he was tribulating. I feel sorry for him, but just think he's not tribulating anymore. Luke 10. In Luke 10, verse 17. And this is where Jesus sent out the 70. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. Um, number three. You don't have to lose. You can win every time. You don't have to lose. And he said unto them, Behold, I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. And he says, Behold, I give you power. It's given power. It's power from the Father. He says, Behold. In other words, listen up here, guys. I give you power. It's God-given power that is available to us. He says, I give you power. And what is the power for? To tread on serpents, scorpions, anything that stupid devil will put on you or take from you. And power over all the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So whatever happens to you, whatever comes against you, Nothing that you go through in this life will hurt your walk of faith if you rise up and start walking it out again. You've got to keep walking it out, a daily walk. And you might be in hurt, you might be in pain, but you get up and you walk that walk of faith again. And you don't look at yourself. No, don't do that. Because if you look at self, don't look at your husband. You might not enjoy that or your wife. Don't look at what they're doing. Look at what you should be doing. 
Don't expect them to do it for you. Don't expect your child or somebody else to do it for you. It's a personal walk. He's a personal savior. It's a personal salvation. We've got to do it. We've got to walk that walk daily. So remember that. You don't have to lose. You can win every time. You don't have to. If you give in, you lose. Paul said, I do not count my life dear. None of these things move me. I'm going to finish my course with joy that I can preach the gospel, that I can teach people the word of God. No matter where I've been or what I've done, I'm going to walk it out in faith. And that's what he did. You can't, you can't lose when you have Jesus. How can you lose? How can you be sad? How can you be depressed? Oh, it'll come. You fight it off, and you start singing the victory of God. You start singing songs of praise. You start giving him honor and glory when that enemy comes and pounds you on your head and starts telling you, what if you'd done this different, or what if you'd done that, or, what if, or why did you say this, or why did you do that? That self-absorption. You just back up, turn around, stand yourself square, facing the word of God and say, I will not go there. I'll not do that. I'll not go there. I'm going to the word. I'm running to the word. That's what I'm going to do. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And number four, his grace is sufficient in every battle. His grace is sufficient in every battle. And uh, verse 13 there has no temptation taken you, such as is common to man. But God is faithful. I think that's an awesome word there. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Maybe he didn't answer your prayer the way you wanted it answered. But he answered it. It might have been in a different way, in a different form. But he answered that prayer. He answered it. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Wow. Wow. Have you been tempted? <laughs> sure, everybody's been tempted. Have you ever been tempted? I know, I know sometimes I just, it, you have somebody and you just like to say something. Have you ever just been to me? You want to just say it, you no good, dirty rat. And you just want to tell them how no good they are and how they've hurt you and all the pain you've gone through because of them. And you want to say it so bad. Or you want to defend yourself and say, I didn't do that. That's a lie. But you keep your mouth shut. Jesus opened not his mouth. And you keep your mouth shut and you passed up that temptation. And you can look back on it. You can say, oh, I'm so glad I didn't say that. Words hurt. Words are everlasting. And words once spoken out of a mouth go into a person. And the words can take a person and can destroy them. So you've got to be careful what kind of words you speak to a person. Because that word can destroy them. And it can even be a true word that they might need to hear. But maybe you're not the one that needs to tell them that. Words. Words. Uh, let's turn to 2 Corinthians. Um, let's see. Let's do 12. His grace is sufficient. Don't forget that. For you. For you. Paul talks here in, in, of all the awesome things that had happened to him, how he was caught up to heaven and how wonderful it was. In verse 4, 12, verse 4, he says, How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. I wish he would have wrote it for us. I wish he would have told us what he saw. Those unspeakable words, my goodness, wonder what, what he was saw, showed and what God said him. Of such as one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. He's going to glory in his infirmities, and that word there is not sickness. It's, it's human weaknesses. Jesus took on our, us. He knew what it was like to be human, and our human weaknesses is what he's going to glory in. 
And then he goes on to say, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth in me, or that he heareth of me. And at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. He had an abundance of revelations. And then if you, if you also just look at verse chapter 11, he says in verse 29, Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? He got offended. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities, my human weaknesses, my human frailties. We all have human weaknesses. God has given every one of us a disposition. We all have some of them. Some of us are rah, rah, rah. Some of us are more gentle. Some of us are, it's just cut and dry. It's my way or no way. You know anybody like that? <laughs> it's just got to be my way. And you can't tell them anything because it's their way. And we're all different. And then other people are just full of joy and bubbling and laughing all the time. And then there's other people that are always in the molly grubs and always complaining. And no matter what you tell them, they're always down and complaining. That's their personality. They need to work on that, don't they? <laughs> Have you ever been around have you ever been around anybody that all they want to do is poor mouth? And they might really be poor, but they're poor mouthing all the time and you don't want to be around them. That's their human weakness. So what can change that human weakness? The walk of faith. God's word. You put more word in, you're able to get stronger and stronger and stronger. The Bible says your faith grows exceedingly. So if I want exceedingly faith that is growing, 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 I got to continually get the word of God in. I got to preach the word of God to myself, and I got to believe what is in this word will come to pass in my life. If I don't believe it, the word won't work for me. The word will only work if I work the word. So if I work the word, it will work for me. So I have a job ahead of me. It's not an easy walk of faith. It's a pushing in there. You have to have tenacity to fight. What happened when Paul got that, that viper, got a hold of him, and what did he do? He shook it off. So when that old viper comes at you, you've got to do some shaking. You've got to do some shaking. Sometimes you just have to just get mad at the devil and shake him off. You can let him run over. You can let him torment your mind and torment you continually and continually and live in that torment. Instead of, why don't you turn the torment into a walk of faith and of joy and preach the word of God to yourself. So in um, just a couple of more scriptures, I told you we're going to make it by 8 o'clock, the book of James. And James 1 where do infirmities, where does sickness come from? Temptations, all these things, the walk of faith. It says in James 1, 16, do not err, my beloved. Do not get in, in, in the wrong doctrine. Listen to what the Word of God says, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift. A good gift and a perfect gift. Have you ever had a good gift? Have you ever had a perfect gift? Years ago when uh, Melissa was little and her sister Beth, they, they were the, the last two at home, and I would get this big present, and I would wrap it, and we'd call it the teaser present, and we'd always have it there like weeks before Christmas, and it would be laid out, and it would be their teaser present. And they would want to open it all the time, and they just could not wait to open it. And I'd have two of them, and it would just torment them day and night because they wanted to open that. And they would bug me every day. Can we open it today? Can we open it today? No. We've got to wait till Christmas. You can't. You've got to wait. you just got to wait. It was a good, and it was a perfect gift. And no matter what was in there, when they finally opened it, they loved it more than anything because it was their desire to see inside of it. So every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. He brings light to our life. He's our Father. He's not a Father of darkness. He's a Father of light. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. And even in our human weaknesses, our human frailties, our human infirmities, He can take those. And in a moment of time, as we walk that walk of faith, 
He will change our night into day. And all of a sudden, the sun will shine again. The morning is there, and it might be the gloomiest day in the whole world. The clouds might be there, and everything might not look too good. But you can look at the clouds, and you can see beauty. And you can see beauty in anything that you can see God in. God in you. God in your husband and your wife. God in your church. When God is there, when he is in you big, you know that he is the perfect gift giver. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. And he bought you as one of his first fruits. And one last scripture, and we'll close. And it happens to be one of my favorite. In Romans 8, his grace is sufficient for every battle, no matter what you go through in this life. And believe me, as I have said, it goes very quickly. It seems like yesterday I was a little girl playing hopscotch. And then it seems like I was a teenager worrying about having to go to P.E. and I didn't want to go to P.E. I didn't want to play dodgeball. That was the most vicious game they ever invented in the whole world. I cannot imagine having to stand in a circle and have somebody throw a hard ball at you. The person must have been crazy that invented that game. And my PE teacher wanted to play dodgeball every PE class. <laughs> so let's read this. Who sh in verse 35, who shall separate us? No matter what you go through in this life, who's going to separate you from the love of God? What is going to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? Any of those things, did it separate Paul from the love of God? Did he get out of the love of God, or did God quit loving him because he went through these things? None of these things. It says here, it, this is written in the book of Psalms also, uh, that God was accused of that we're sheep for a slaughter. But that's not true. That's what Satan says for, about us. That we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. We're not. We're not counted for that. It says we are killed all the day long as sheep for the slaughter. But then Paul goes on to say, he says, nay, none of these things. None of these things. He says that, nay, in all these things, in all these things, in persecution, distress, tribulation, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, all those things, none of these things, not one of these things. He says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You tonight, as you sit in this sanctuary, you are more than conquerors. Why? Because he loves you. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So be it. The walk of faith. That's what we've got to walk. Is that not right? We're walking that. Now let's, we're going to pray for Tom tonight. He's, you're going home. Tom, you've got two homes. Two. You're a man of two countries. <laughs> I know.
would like to thank you for joining us in today's service. And if you would like more information, come check us out at gatewayfamilychurch.com.